Talk us through this sprint. They always get analyzed. If you should have started quicker, you should have let it out, you should have done this and that. How should Pogaccia have played this sprint? Does he have a right to be frustrated with, say, Van Baal coming in onto MVP's draft at the end? Because he was visibly mad after this race. When it comes to Pogacar's sprint, I'd say that once you start your sprint in second position, you're dependent on the first rider for the speed that is being taken into the sprint. We saw last year's sprint, Vanderpool was the one at the front, but had a decent tempo with Osgren in the wheel, which then benefited Osgren, who could start from far and therefore go from, I think, 230 meters from the finish line and end up beating Vanderpool from a uh, rather fast compared to today's sprint and a far one as well. And then we look at today, and we see that Vanderpool is starting it from a basically half the speed than last year, I dare to say, going into the final 250 meters. Vanderpool sees that Thumbala and Maduaz are coming, and perhaps he thought to himself, if I wait long enough, then they might actually box in Pogacar here. And eventually it led to the point where Vanderpool kick-started a sprint before actually properly launching because he start, stopped for a bit and then started again. That was right at the moment where Van Bal and Maduas came by the sides of Pogacar. And the only way that I see that Pogacar could get out of this is by launching just before Van Bal and Maduas block him in. But then he's risking to launch quite early, which is, yeah, the thing I see as the option here because there's quite a few people that are saying, well, he should have had a faster speed in the run into the sprint, but you can only do that if you're a first rider. And if you're the first rider with Vanderpool in your wheel, you're probably going to lose a sprint anyway. If he leads out MVDP and MVDP beats him in the sprint, he looks like the dumbest rider in history. So he was hoping MVDP stopped it. MVDP yeah. played this perfectly. The only way he loses this sprint, and he can always do after hard races, he can always do 1400 with 10 second good power. If MVP starts at 250, Pogacar in the draft the entire time, kind of like the Makuni sprint, Pogacar can win. But if he does like a long sprint, and that's how Asgren went early and made it into yep. a 17, 20 second sprint. If he makes it into a 10, 12 second sprint, and I think he was trying to bait him, Benji, that initial surge, and then he stopped, looked, he's like, holy shit, I actually got half a bike length on you sat back down again, waited for Madawaz. Because he knew, right, those guys coming behind are fucked. So like, they're not going to actually beat MVDP in the sprint. And I don't know if it was by design. Alaphilippe did MVDP dirty in Raban Pale 2019, boxed him in incredibly. Van Baal did that to Pagacha. It seemed like Pagacha didn't really trust his sprint, Benji. I think he, the way he's done sprints, like he beat Alaphilippe in Liège, draft, 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 last 50 meters come out of the wheel. I think he was hoping that would happen. Van Baal, though, let's talk about the Argy Bargy. Van Baal, who's carrying more speed from behind. Those guys have paced full gas to catch back to Pog and MVP. Van Baal comes in onto MVP's wheel, and he's carrying a lot more speed than Pog. And almost chops Pog's front wheel, and Pog takes his hands off the bars and pushes Van Baal. I don't really know how to call this one because it's actually rare that you see this. You don't really see this in bunch sprints too much. Obviously, Pog. I don't. He nearly got his front wheel chopped, but he he was already cooked by this point. He was yeah. like, "How could he?" He wanted to open up his sprint into a space that literally didn't exist. Matter was on the barriers. Um, but yeah, I think that's a long way of saying I think MVP played it perfectly. Yes, it would have been hard for him to lose this sprint. What do you think for Pog in the future, Benji? Do you think well, do you think he's he's gonna in the future be like, I have to go on Parterberg against the big classics guys? Like I can't just go to the sprint. I don't think he should be like overly sad by this loss he showed that he can win all five monuments in his career. But about today I do want to add that yes, Von Bala did slowly get into a Pogacar's front wheel there, but I don't think it was a... I wouldn't rate it as a deviation, like a proper deviation that should infer the deviation rule, to be honest. He did not necessarily endanger Pogacar, in my personal opinion. I don't think this was a, a full-on deviation in that point. So I think the person that Pogacar is mostly angry at is himself. And I feel like Pogacar choked it, but I can't blame him too much because I probably would have done the same in that similar situation because... It doesn't happen often that you've got this specific situation in a race, so it's Never. very difficult to prepare for it. So I can't really say, oh, Pogi, you fucked it, mate. Come on. 
like, nah, I can't, I can't say that because yeah, he, he lost a race, but a lot of riders would have done that in his situation. Well, yeah, like he was banking on MVP sort of bottling it and going at 250 to go and getting the slipstream and then maybe coming around and winning. And MVP played it so, so cool. It's like ice in his veins type stuff. Like yeah. sometimes his positioning, sometimes his choices leave a little bit to be desired, but in the finale here, unbelievable. He started racing at MSR about three weeks ago. Two and yep. a half weeks ago, he's won Toise Dour, a stage of Settimana, Copy Bartoli, which no one saw, and now his second Tour of Flanders. Incredible result. And, yeah, big congrats to MVP withstanding the onslaught from Pog. I would say, Benji, Pog on Yumbo Visma wins this race. Think about, like, the panic situation they were doing with 75 Ks to go with Trenton having to chase for Pogaccia. And I think that's why he really wanted second at worst. Um I think it's nice, Benji, to see Pagacha a little bit frustrated for once. It can't be <laughs> it can't be too easy all the time. Yeah. It's good to see some adversity. It's a shame for him, I guess, missing out on the podium, but we'll see how he fights back. This clip is from the full recap of the Tour in Flanders from the Lantern Roos Cycling Podcast presented by Zwift. Matthew van der Poel actually began his recovery on the bike, on Zwift, all the way back in January before the Tour of Flanders today. Zwift is the online cycling platform that makes training fun. If you want to check it out, there's a seven-day free trial at Zwift.com through the link in the description down below. Thanks, as always, to Zwift, the presenting sponsor of the Lantern Recycling Podcast. 